Hey guys, I'm Sarah, this is Rue, and today we're gonna talk to you about safety and security as a solo traveler living in a van with a dog. Rue's got a lot to say. <laughs> So I've been traveling full time for two years now, which is wild to think about and it's been a really amazing experience. I'm so, so glad I have done it and I plan to continue doing it because the amount of just exponential growth that I have experienced as a human being in that two years is it's outstanding and I can't wait to see what progress I make in the following two years and the two years after that. I meet a lot of people that say, I don't know how you do it, it's really scary and how do you do all these things by yourself? And ultimately it started with going to a concert by myself when I couldn't find anyone else to go with me. And I was like, well, screw this. I don't want to miss out on this experience just because no one else will go with me. So I went by myself and that's kind of how it all started. And now I travel the country by myself. Eventually, I do want to branch out into international travel, but I have only experienced travel in the United States and Canada. First, I want to talk about safety as a solo traveler, van or no van. These are things that I do that have protected me regardless of my living situation and they can be applied to your everyday life or if you just go on a short trip or even a day hike. Whenever I do go hiking, I make sure to let all of my closest friends and family members know what trail I'm going to be on and I let them know when I have completed the trail as well. I also share my location with them indefinitely so they can track me at all times and when I don't have cell signal, I also carry a Garmin Messenger, which is an SOS GPS device that works without any signal. So I can send text messages off of there, I can send out an SOS if I need to, and it also tracks my location regardless if I have service or not. Although I share my location with my closest friends and family members, I do not share my location on social media. I feel like this has become pretty obvious at this point, but it's worth mentioning. I never share my exact location while I am there on social media because you just honestly never know. This is an easier thing to do when you are moving more often, but for me, I am settling in an area for about three months for my next assignment because I am a healthcare traveler so it is going to be a bit challenging for me to make sure I am staying safe by not sharing my exact location since I'm going to be here for a few months. So my next few videos will probably all be inside of my van and not showing too much of my surroundings. Whenever I get to a new area that I'm not familiar with, if I'm walking in a city or even just hiking, I do carry a few items with me for self-defense just in case because once again, you never know. I also took self-defense classes when I lived in California and originally ordered my Airstream because I want to make sure if I don't have any items on me that I can protect myself with my body as well. Ultimately, when I'm checking out a new area that I'm unfamiliar with, I just make sure to stay very aware of my surroundings and trust my gut, if I feel like I am in a sketchy area, I will just leave. My favorite security item that I travel with at all times is my dog, Rue. Not only is she a great travel companion, but she also doubles as a great security system. Not only when I'm out and about, but when I am in my van. I've had Rue since she was nine weeks old and she has been my best bud ever since. She is now eight years old and she's been traveling with me for the two years that I've spent on the road. And honestly, it's enhanced my experience so much. 
and it just gives me the peace of mind knowing that I have her with me at all times. She knows how to bark on command and she's also very aware of our surroundings. So if she hears any sort of weird noise outside of the van, she knows how to alert me that someone might be outside. She keeps me safe and I have to keep her safe too by making sure that she is comfortable living inside the van. So let's move on to safety, living in a van or any recreational vehicle. As you all know, it has been a very hot summer. I had a 12 volt air conditioner installed on my roof of the van to make sure that she stays cool in the summer. But even with that, it has stayed pretty toasty in the van. So I brought in some extra reinforcements and got a portable air conditioner by Zero Breeze. I can set it up on the floor so that cool air can circulate where she likes to hang out. And it can run anywhere from three and a half to eight hours, depending on the setting that I leave it on and how hot it is outside. The guys at Drifter Vans CNC'd a cutout for my slider window. That way there's holes for the intake and output tubes and we didn't have to cut any holes in the side of my van. My window covers by The Wonderful are also a great tool to keep heat out and they provide privacy. So I keep them up wherever I am, whether it is a parking lot or a park. If I am not inside the van and there's people outside of it, I don't want anyone being able to look in and see what's inside. I also had a three-part sliding door custom made for the van for privacy, but I didn't realize how great it would be for insulation as well. It keeps so much heat from getting into the back of the van and there is a drastic temperature difference in the front cab versus the living space when I keep it closed. Plus the other side is carpeted black, so if anyone were to look inside of the front windows, they can't really tell that someone is living back here. I personally think it looks much more stealth than a curtain. Another safety item that I keep inside the van for Rue specifically is a waggle pet monitor. So if I'm ever not sure if the AC is working or if the van is cool enough for her, I can check the temperature on my phone and it also alerts me if it does get too hot in here. Another great thing about the waggle pet monitor is it has a GPS on it. So I can use it to track my van if it were to ever get stolen. Okay, so moving on to non-dog related security features in my van. One of the first things I installed was a security system by Simply Safe. I researched quite a bit of different security systems and noticed a lot of van lifers also use this system and I've really enjoyed it so far. The guys at the shop probably thought it was overkill, but I did not care. I love this thing. It gives me so much peace of mind because it comes with motion sensors, glass break detectors, and a camera. You can build your own kit so you can get as many or as little as you want and I have made it fully custom to my van. If it senses anything when I put it in away mode, it alerts me on my phone, which is so nice. I even have a little key fob, so after I get out of the van and I lock it, I can put it in away mode. I also love having a camera inside the van when I have to run into the store and I want to check on Rue and make sure she's doing okay, and she has been doing a lot better for any of you that have been following me. She has calmed down so much and doesn't even have to be in her crate anymore. She stays on the bed and typically just looks out the bunk window waiting for me to return. And sometimes I come back and she's sleeping on the floor. Another security item that I asked the guys to add onto my van as soon as I picked it up is extra locks on the inside. So even if someone were to pick a lock on the outside, they still can't get in. I actually forgot that I had my slider door locked when security was going through my van at the Canadian border and they were asking me why they couldn't get in my door and I honestly didn't remember at the time because I had just got in the van. So it does work really well and it's nothing fancy. I'm not going to specify exactly which locks I have but I will put 
some different options in the description below with links along with everything that I talk about in this video. It'll all be down there. I also have a locking mechanism on the sliding door that divides the front cab from the living space. So if anyone were to break into the front of the van, they still can't get to me in the back. Honestly, I sleep so good at night knowing that no one can really get inside here unless they were to break a window. I do keep a glass breaking device right next to my bed so I could flee the situation if I needed to. I also know how to get out of the back door and I keep a plethora of safety items next to my bed every night when I go to sleep including my key fob alarm so I can make the alarm on the outside of the van go off and I have an alarm on the inside of the van as well just to kind of scare them away and then if they do come inside I do have different safety items sprinkled throughout my van so I can easily grab one to protect myself if necessary. I also always make sure that everything is stowed that needs to be if I need to hop in the driver's seat and drive away to flee a sketchy situation. I also make sure wherever I park I am backed in or I have an easy exit if I need to get out quickly. If anyone were to break in my van while I am not in it, I have more than one safe that I keep in here that are in hard to find places and extremely, extremely difficult to remove. So I make sure before I leave or exit my van for any reason, I put all of my valuables in my safes. Depending on the area that I'm parked, sometimes I will also use a steering wheel lock. It is not only a visual deterrent, but it makes it pretty impossible to drive off in my van if someone were to break in and somehow get the engine started. So that covers pretty much everything on the inside of my van that I use for safety that I am willing to disclose at this time. So let's move on to safety items that I have for the outside of my van. Since I don't have a roof rack where things can be mounted to and I don't want to drill into the side of my van, a lot of my safety items are removable. I recently got these outdoor cameras by Autovox that are actually backup cameras cameras, but they don't require any Wi-Fi or any wiring, so I didn't have to drill into the van, and they have been a game changer for monitoring the outside of my van when I'm in unfamiliar areas. If I hear anything go bump in the night, I can literally just hit the screen on the monitor next to my bed and see what's going on outside. It's been really nice since I don't have windows on the entire driver's side of my van. I did that on purpose to remain half stealth, if you will, and also not have a window right behind my head so if someone were to smash it, I wouldn't get a head injury while I'm sleeping as well. <laughs> but without a window on that side means I can't look outside if I hear something in the night, so that's when the cameras come in. My dear friend Billy at Drifter Vans installed two heavy duty magnets on them, so basically I open up my window in the front and I can stand on either the driver or the passenger seat and reach up as far as I can and stick it on the side of the van. It doesn't come off because I accidentally drove on the highway with one, but it was still there when I got to my destination and I'm able to put it high enough so that people on the ground can't reach up and grab it. And then when I'm ready to move on, I just take them off in the morning and move on. I also have removable motion lights that clip onto my rearview mirrors that I set up at night so that if anyone were to come near my van, it shines a super bright light on them. On the outside of my van, I don't have any fun bumper stickers, nothing that signifies that I am living in here or that I'm a female. I don't keep any gender specific items up front either so that if someone were to look in, they can't tell that unfortunately a woman is living in here. I don't keep any valuables up front, but I do keep some dog related items. So hopefully if someone peers in, they could figure a dog is in here and to not mess with this van. <laughs> I do have a few small stickers on the outside of my van that indicate that there is a security system in here with an alarm. 
So hopefully that is a visual deterrent as well. I park in different areas every night. I have only been in the van specifically for a few months. So I don't feel like an expert at all on parking yet. I'm still learning as I go. So maybe that will be a future video. In the beginning, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty scary sleeping in different areas every single night in the van. But as time goes on, I have gotten a lot more comfortable and I have realized that it's not as scary and unsafe as everyone thinks that it is. I have taken a lot of measures as far as getting a bunch of different locks installed and security items and features and knowing that I can protect myself if necessary. Ultimately, it's just really important to be aware of your surroundings and trust your gut. Get out of sketchy situations if you feel like you are unsafe. It's important to plan ahead and research the area that you might be staying and see if there are other campground reviews so you can see what other people have thought of that campsite. Like I said, I always back into my sites so I can get away quickly if I need to. I try not to draw any attention to myself. I get in and out of the front instead of the passenger sliding door. I also have a subscription to Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome, which has been a really great option for nights that I just can't find a safe, free parking spot. So I will go stay on a farm instead. And honestly, there is no better, safer feeling than that. I hope I'm not forgetting anything, but that pretty much covers everything that I am willing to share about my personal safety as a solo traveler living in a van. There are so many more great security items and features that you can add to your RV and different things that you can do to make yourself feel safe and protected on the road. If you know of of any great security items that I didn't mention in this video or tips for fellow viewers and myself, make sure to leave a comment below. We can create a great community chat down there where we can help other solo travelers out. Even if you are traveling with someone else, it's really important to stay aware and just be safe on the road because this is such a great experience and nobody should hold themselves back from doing it because of fear. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I am so, so grateful for all of my travels and I wouldn't be who I am today without all of these amazing adventures that I have been on and I can't wait to go on more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time.